Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Greetings. My name is Jeff Ross. I'm one of the pastors here at the Roswell United Methodist Church. Thanks for joining us for this time of worship. Our scripture passage today comes from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 14. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And the gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I'm suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I've entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for this wonderful day, World Communion Sunday. And we pray your blessing, your guidance as we uh, seek to understand your word uh, and your word for us today. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we get into this uh, verse, or these verses in 2 Timothy, we know that Paul is in prison, and he is uh, struggling. He's got to be struggling. Uh, and he even says something about that in this passage and also other passages. Um, and he's writing this letter to Timothy to encourage him. But as Paul is encouraging Timothy, he's probably encouraging himself. Uh, and, and just being in prison like he is, he has to have good days and bad days. Some days he's feeling excited about the future and hopeful about all that God is doing. But there have to be other days where he's not so optimistic. And I imagine that in prison, Paul is reading or reciting or remembering the Psalms. One of those psalms uh, might be on his mind as he shares this message to Timothy, and that's Psalm 137. There's a part in Psalm 137 where the writer is trying to remember their song. Uh, and, uh, and they're having trouble because they're in exile, because they're a long way from home. Uh, they're having trouble remembering their song. 
And I think that's on Paul's mind as he's talking to Timothy because it's a, it's a, 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 a passage of scripture where Paul is trying to encourage Timothy, no matter what the circumstances around you, remember your song. He tells Timothy earlier in this passage to remember your mom, remember your faith, focus on the positive things. Here is my song that I wish to pass on to you. Here is uh, my hope, my faith uh, that I want to pass on to you, Timothy. Um, but your song has to be your song. And that's true for all of us. Uh, we can't take somebody else's song, somebody else's faith, uh, and just uh, put it on like a coat. It has to be our song, our faith, our voice, our heart, our jam. We are in the middle here at Roswell Methodist Church of our confirmation class. We spend a number of weeks uh, talking to the youth, 6th, 7th, 8th graders about their faith uh, and especially about how they have come to this faith. A lot of times in the Methodist Church, a family will bring an infant uh, to the sanctuary for baptism. And the parents of that child pledge to raise the child in faith so that that child at some point in the future might accept for themselves the gift of salvation. And so confirmation, by the very name, uh, is a, an opportunity to confirm for myself what my parents did and said and, and wanted for me. Uh, but it's a transitional point in our lives where it's not my parents' faith anymore, but it's my faith. So verse 13 of our passage says, Paul says to Timothy, follow the pattern of sound words which you have heard so that you may grab on to your own faith and find your own song. He says in verse 14, guard the truth that has been entrusted in you. Uh, the same sort of way that we entrust uh, a, a child uh, with faith and with stories and attendance at church. The words you have heard, the truth that has been entrusted. Um, for those of you listening today that have gone through some process like confirmation, uh, I wonder if you remember the moment that transition took place in your life. It was no longer your family's faith, your grandparents' faith, your mom and dad, but it became your story. Maybe it was through a worship service. Maybe it was a youth retreat, a young life event, a choir tour, a mission trip, a concert, uh, some event uh, that was the catalyst for your experience of faith in God and Christ in your life, not something you were just hearing about, but something that you were in experiencing for yourself. So that's why Paul is so passionate in this passage towards Timothy, because difficult times can enact a toll on all of us. In Psalm 137, the people are in exile. Their homeland has been decimated by an invading army. They don't know what's next. Uh, they're fighting for their lives. As they think about singing the songs of faith, they say to one another, how can we sing in a foreign land? How can we find our song in this place? And that's a struggle that, that we all face. How do we uh, navigate new times and dangerous times and anxious times uh, uh, well? How do we apply our faith uh, into this time and find a way forward? In Paul's day, the church is under siege. Paul is in prison. It's not the greatest time to be proclaiming your faith. And so Paul is asking the same questions. How do I hang on to my song? How do I hold on to that? So we come here on World Communion Sunday uh, to celebrate with churches all over the world uh, the sacrament of communion. And sadly, we can't truthfully say that the church around the world is unified and in solidarity to each other. You might say, 
like the Israelites in Psalm 137, that we have lost our song or that we're struggling to hang on to our song. And that's sad. World Communion Sunday ought to be a time of hope and of joy and of encouragement, of incredible stories of faith from around the world, incredible stories of ecumenical solidarity. It ought to give birth to new and wonderful, joyful songs. And so, you know, as I was preparing this message and thinking about World Communion Sunday, that's where my mind went. It ought to be this time of joy and of hope. It ought to be a time of celebration. It ought to be a, a happy Sunday time. And so I started thinking about this camp song, a song that I sang in youth events and camps, uh, and it's one of those songs, it's a short little song, and you know how a song gets in your head and you can't get it out, you find yourself humming it, uh, and so I thought I would share it with you. It goes like this, it's a happy day, and I thank God for the weather, it's a happy day. And I'm living it for my Lord. It's a happy day. And things are going to get better. Living each day by the promises in God's word. La, la. I wonder if you've sung that song. Did any of y'all know that? Uh, it's a great camp song. It's a happy uh, little song. It ought to uh, resonate with everybody when we come together for World Communion Sunday. It's a great song, and I love the little line. It's kind of strange. It says, it's a happy day, and things are going to get better. Well, that's pretty good. If it's a happy day and things are going to get better, uh, that's, that's even more. Uh, it's kind of like God with grace, over the top, overflowing. Um, and World Communion Sunday ought to be like that. We ought to be able to push aside uh, differences and peculiarities and, and uh, penchants for worship and, and, uh, and be able to celebrate with each other the uniqueness and the diversity of our faith and the way we worship God, the way we have experienced and come to God, a day where we celebrate our collective song. World Communion Sunday started in 1933. It was a Presbyterian church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania uh, that was struggling with an idea, a way to uh, show the interconnectedness of Christian churches around the world regardless of denomination. And they chose communion to be the symbol for that unity. In 1940, the Federal Council of Churches of Christ in America, which included the United Methodist Church, decided that the first Sunday in October would be World Communion Sunday. It's a Sunday where we could sing each other's songs, give hope to the world, uh, and share with Paul's message to Timothy this idea of hope. Paul in this letter, is sharing with Timothy his song, Paul's song. It, 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 Timothy's going to have to find his own song, but listen to these words from the scripture we read. For I know, says Paul, whom I have believed, and I'm sure that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. You know, there's a, a hope there that... Uh, is, is rare. There's a hope there that we all need uh, to catch. There's a, a hope there that ought to guide us, guide us forward and away from all of the distractions in the church today. And there's so many distractions in every denomination, in our world, uh, in the ways in which different uh, worldly influences have filtered into the church, all kinds of things to distract us from what's really most important. And hope is what World Communion Sunday ought to deliver. Hope and faith that God is alive, that God is working, that God is active and well in our world today. And I believe 
that God is. But often we don't choose to focus on the good things that God is doing. We choose to focus on these other distractions. And believe me, it is a choice. Uh, as we hear chatter, uh, we can choose to follow that chatter and comment on it and participate in it. Or we can choose not to. We can choose to focus on what God is doing and choose to stay away from and not be a participant in the ways in which distractions keep us from what God is doing. We need to think differently. We need to ponder things in a new way. We need to focus our attention in different ways. But that's a challenge for human beings, isn't it? Because we tend to think linearly. Uh, and um, and, and, the, and the, the struggle with that is that we get stuck in, in ruts of ways of thinking uh, and sometimes aren't able to push past that into new ways of thinking. Let me uh, illustrate that if I can. Uh, if I were to ask you, to give you a choice, if you would, uh, would, would rather receive a million dollars, just a packet of money just handed to you, a million dollars, or would you rather receive a penny and then have that penny doubled every day? So a penny today, two cents tomorrow, four cents the next day, uh, eight cents the following day, uh, 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 and so on uh, and for a whole month. Which would you choose? Let me let you think about that. A million dollars? Or a penny that's doubled every day? How many of y'all would say you'd take the million? How many of you would say that you want the penny? Well, if you, uh, if you chose the penny and it doubled every day, at the end of 30 days you would have five million $368,709. If you were fortunate enough to do this experiment in a 31-day month, you would have $10,737,418. That's incredible, isn't it? That doesn't seem to fit our logic and ways of thinking, uh, but it's a, a different way of, of thinking about uh, problems. Math can help us. Uh, the world, uh, the, uh, seeing things from a cosmic perspective, uh, seeing an overarching view of things uh, often can help us, uh, but we get locked into a way of thinking. We get locked into uh, the way we've always done things. And, and you know, if you do the math on this, uh, it doesn't look good for a while. And that's where we get nervous and we get anxious, especially when we're thinking about God. We get nervous that God's not going to fulfill this or come through or, or whatever. On, uh, on the 15th day, if you do this experiment, if the, uh, you only have $163. Uh, on the 20th day, you only have 5200 uh, and. Um, and, and $42. So it looks bleak. It looks like, oh, I made such a mistake not taking the million dollars. A week out, uh, you only have $41,000. And still, it looks like it's not going anywhere. We can choose to live in fear, or we can choose to live in hope. The exiles in Psalm 137... They struggled for a number of days, uh, for a number of years. But a few years after Psalm 137, they left that area of exile, returned to Jerusalem, and built a new temple. Uh, they, they came back home and were able to sing their songs in their homeland, in their temple. In Paul's day, surely as he sat in prison uh, with many of the disciples already having perished, that Paul's outlook for the church looked bleak. And here he is kind of turning the reins over to this young boy, really, Timothy. 
and entrusting the whole of the Christian future into the hands of this next generation. Surely Paul had some reason to pause as he thought about how all this would turn out. When we look around today, um, we, we have maybe more questions than we have answers for. But God is at work in Psalm 137, in Paul's day, in our day. God is at work doing things that we can't even imagine. People are being born today that will impact this world in marvelous ways in the future. Some of the folks that are going through confirmation around the world uh, will impact faith and, and Christianity uh, and ways of getting along with other folks in ways that we can't even imagine. We need to think in non-linear ways. We need to keep singing. We need to find our song and hang on to it. It's a happy day and I'm living it for my Lord. It's a happy day and things are going to get even better. Living each day by the promises in God's word. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for the opportunity we have to follow you, to serve you. Forgive us, God, when we uh, want to give up, when we think, oh, the end is near. Oh, things have gotten so bad. Oh, it's just so dismal. Help us not to put our trust in the world. Help us not to put our trust in what we alone can think. Help us to put our trust and our confidence and our faith in you and walk beside you in this life. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.